We recording? Yeah. Okay. We're going to keep that in there. Fuck it. Cool. Um, raw. Keep it, yeah. keep it raw and real, man. We have to, bro. Yeah, we man. have to because it's, it's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've been in Atlanta, what, 18 years now? Oh, okay. From Brooklyn. So I'm gotcha, like. Gotcha, from Brooklyn. Yeah. Okay. I got some family out there. Do you? Yeah. Where yeah. you originally from? I'm originally from Page, Arizona, a tiny ass town. In, Page, um, Arizona. It's on the Utah, Arizona border. That's strictly desert out there. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's it's yeah, it's, it's it's literally like on Indian reservations. So. Really? Yeah, yeah. How was that? It was it was interesting. It was because I was the only black kid, so I was kind of a commodity. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? So I I didn't really. You had the attention. Yeah, I had certain. <laughs> yeah, in the beginning it was bad, but I flipped right. it. I learned how to flip it eventually into. That's you gold know, right there, definitely. Positive attention, you know, to where. Oh well, not all of it positive, but I'm gonna say, you know, I, I learned how to flip that attention into. <laughs> Attention that was positive for me, I guess you could say. You know? Right, right. So you at were there the from, from birth, or did you move there as a um, child? Or? I was I was actually born in Phoenix, um, but um, I was adopted at birth. And, oh, wow. And, um, so, but my the, the people who I call parents, who are my parents, you know, they yeah. they um, moved to Page when I was born. My dad, he's an um, engineer, an okay. electronic engineer, so. Yeah. So same race family, black family. Yeah, yeah, yeah black family. Uh-huh. Yeah, that happens. Because uh, white people pick up little black kids that like, yeah, like, like yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's like a new thing, isn't it? <laughs> it you know it, what I mean? It like, really is. Yeah, like, just, yeah. I want a little black child. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but nah, my um, shout out to my 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 birth parents too. I've um, um, I've actually met my father, and then I have um, two brothers and a sister. That's shout, dope. Shout out to them. Um, but um, uh, going through that um. Finding out, uh, I found out early. You know, as soon as okay. as soon as my parents, I, I guess I was old enough for them to, to grasp the concept. They went ahead and told me, I guess, because I guess they didn't want me resenting sure. anything, you know, in the future. So, um, and if something happens and you get sick or something, and right, you need right, a kidney, right. like no one matches them, exactly, like mm, how come right. dad and mom don't match? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right. 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 Something crazy like that happens down the line, but um, but yeah, I'd, uh, as 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 early as I could grasp the concept, I knew so. But um, how did that make you feel? Um, did you feel lost I, I, alone? And I, 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 that kind of circles around to where I was going with it is because um, my my actual biological parents they specified certain things. Okay. Like and so you know I, I I've always loved and respected the, them for that because you you know you yeah. drop me off at the fucking uh, police station or something. exactly you know what I mean? yeah. like, so and you know they find kids in dumpsters every day and then, right you know it's it's, it's shit's crazy yeah so, it really is you yeah. know um, they 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 literally specified that they wanted me to be in an African American family um, okay. with a with a father and mother both college educated um, oh so they, you know, g- they gave some instructions they, yeah, they yeah. were like and, and I was in a um I was in a private uh, adoption agency I wasn't actually in oh. like a public okay. you know the the state adoption agency I Got was in you. a private adoption agency so. You know, they, they really... They wanted to make sure you yeah. were good. I mean, they they exactly, couldn't take care yeah. of you like that. Right, right, right. They would, right. You had the most opportunity possible. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, I love them for that, you know. Um, so, yeah, you, it's, you know, I was, I was definitely afforded some, some more blessings than, you know, a lot of, a lot of people yeah. get in that situation. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I was, my, my youngest sister just adopted. Oh, really? That's yeah. dope. That's and, dope. Um, and... We didn't tell her, I think, until maybe she was in her teens. Gotcha. Because gotcha. she looks exactly like us. It was like, yo, like she flows right in. Right, right. You know How'd that work out, though? It, it's, How, did, she, she was she, surprised. She was devastated. She was oh, really? Damn. She was devastated. She, well, not in a bad way. She right, was just like, right. so, like, it was so much overwhelming for her. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, but it's just, we're, we're blood, we're family. Right. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it, doesn't like, change, it doesn't change yeah, anything. Yeah, right, anything. Exactly. It really doesn't. Yeah, yeah. You, know, you want people to know for the, the, the ancestry part, the health part. Right, you know right. That, that, so, that's what was kind of important to me. Yeah. You know, and then also, um, you know, with the with doing the music thing, like, I've always been attracted to music, so I always kind of wanted to know who, where so, that came from. So and, when, know, when did that start for you with the music? Um, well, I, I loved music since I was, you know, old enough to know what it was, to be honest with you. Uh, it's just, it's been a... a a frequency thing to me. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's certain notes attract me in certain different ways, and and even even down to to television. Like I remember the music before I even remember like certain scenes right. and movies and the characters yeah. and things. Like I remember what the movie sounded like. You know, more more so than anything. So um, yeah, that's you know I've, I've just been always attracted to that. And then um, I played piano for like um, twelve years. My that's what's like, up, though. I hated it as a kid. <laughs> How about you know, now, though? How you feel about I, it now? I, 
I'm so glad. You know, um, <laughs> as as I mean, as when I was young and started out, it was cool. But then once it got super serious, as I I got it going, I was yeah. like, man, I can't. I want to go hang out with my friends, and <laughs> but I got to go. You know, two hour piano practice and this that on Saturday, Sunday. You know, so, but um, in the long run, it definitely. Definitely helped me out because I, I produce, you know, right. all, all the music that you hear on my page. Like I produce that, so like I, I, from from the beat to mixing and mastering from conception to the end, I, it's all you. Yeah, I, it's all me. Yeah, that's what's up. Yeah, Not too many people it. could could say that. Yeah, at all. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. very few people do it. Mm-hmm. They and very few people people do it well. I appreciate. And that. with with your music that I've heard, yeah, it's dope as hell. I appreciate. That, that. I, I love the sound. Cool. I love your lyrics. The thank sound you. is very unique, though. It's like you know, it's it's you. Right. You thank feel, you. Thank it's, you. It's thank not, you. That's what I strive for. I'm not yeah. really trying to, you know, fit in a, a genre necessarily. And you shouldn't. Like you know. You shouldn't. But I, I mean, I respect all, all types of music. I, I honestly, and then growing up in 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 Page, I was introduced to rock music before sure. I was even introduced to rap music because a lot of the Native American kids they were in a you know Metallica and Pantera and. <laughs> You know, then then Lincoln Park came out, and that that's when um, I kind of started making this transition to yeah. to the rap. And then uh, my, my first rap CD I bought was Busta Rhymes. It was a uh, Extinction Level event. <laughs> I remember that one, man. And that fucking CD changed my life. Like I just <laughs> I remember because you know I grew up in a Christian household, so I couldn't really right. I had to kind of maneuver and hide my music and shit. Yeah. So I remember working my ass off at at my uh, my paper route at the time. I went up to the store and I bought the fucking cassette, the Extinction Level yeah. event cassette. And I rocked that bitch till the wheels fell off. Oh my God. Like, Just bring the mic a little bit closer to you, man. Oh, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Damn. Yeah. My, first, damn my first cassette was NWA. NWA? I was 11 years old. I got my allowance. They came out. And that was my. F- now, it was, I was listening to hip hop music, of course, throughout. I was a kid because it was prevalent when I was growing up in Brooklyn. Gotcha, of course, you know, yeah. They're breaking and, you know, or, or people, the DJs hooking up their, their sets to the, the lamp post and having block parties in the, right. in the street. Right, that's where it started. Yeah, yeah. so yeah. growing up with that, that was dope. But then my, when I was able to actually have money and purchase my first record, it was NWA. It was weird because they were West Coast. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, but yeah. I fell in love with Ice Cube. I would gotcha. put his tape in my boombox. I'm rewinding it. I'm writing the lyrics. Play it right, again. Right. Stop it. Pause it. Rewind it. Write gotcha. the lyrics again. And just doing that all day long. Gotcha. It was crazy. I think I recall the first, the first time though that I really fell in love with hip hop was when I, w- I was here in Atlanta. I was in the Greenbrier Mall with my mom, and we were in a hair store. And the Loonies. Yeah. I got five on it. <laughs> yes. Played on the radio <laughs> and it was like music from the guys to me. I don't yeah. know, like I didn't know what the fuck it meant, what you know, what the hell they were talking about. But it was just, I had five on it. And I didn't know what the fuck you know I was talking about or you know. But it was just that sound. And then I remember walking through Walmart, my hometown, and hearing, I think it was Big Pun. I don't want to be a player no more. Yeah. And those two songs really like combined with that Buster Rhymes yeah. CD, like. I was just like, what is this? Exactly. You know, and it, Absolutely. I was kind of kind of sheltered from it for a long time. You know? And then this kind of that, that, a wave of music just kind of hit Right, you. exactly, yeah. exactly. So, and come, yeah. when did you come to Atlanta? I came to Atlanta in uh, 04 after graduating from high school. Okay, how was that move? Um, it, it wasn't so bad because I was uh, always back and forth. I, okay. I always had aunties who lived here. Right. So I was, I was back and forth, you know. Um, either it was every other summer I was either right. in California or I was I was uh, out here, because uh, my grandmother um, before she passed she lived in um, South Carolina so this okay. was the closest you know kind of hub to absolutely get to her and then I had aunties like I said who lived here so that's a big transition from the desert to all this greenery we have here in Atlanta yeah it's definitely definitely <laughs> different definitely different because you know um, Arizona is is really wide open mm-hmm. the way the way it's set up to is is just grids and Boy, learning Atlanta is really cool. I'm, I, to this day, I still like go on roads like, oh shit, that's how you get. There. Okay, <laughs> it all makes sense now. The 285 does this. this. I'm like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I've been I've been to Phoenix twice. Okay. What I do is every time I go to a different city, um, I buy a fitted. Gotcha. From that city, so that's, that's dope. That's like my little trinket. Right, for right, me. right. I still a damn magnet. 
Gotcha. I always give me a fidget from that city. That's dope. And um, I should have I worn my Diamond Bats hat. <laughs> I, sh- I should have worn that for him. Damn, that's my bad. Yeah. I got the Diamond Bats hat. It's all cheap. Um, got it on my but, hand. Um, it's a terrible, <laughs> terrible fucking tattoo, but <laughs> hey. Love it, man. <laughs> no, you, like, you come into Atlanta, and Atlanta's known for music for a long time. Right, right. You know, it's kind of just, this is the mecca for the South. Mm-hmm. You know what Definitely. I'm saying? Because there's nothing else really around us yeah. except for Atlanta Metro. And I think people who don't know about Atlanta, it's it's big and it's small at the same time. Boy, I, you said something. <laughs> right? It's, it's a you small can really, world. Yeah. It's, it's really because you can bump into people. Yeah. There's only but so many places you can really chill at. It's growing, don't get me wrong. Right. But everyone knows someone. Yeah. When I um literally within... I think the first month I moved to Atlanta, it was this place called the Shannon Mall. I don't yep. know if anybody remembers it. <laughs> yep. Oh, in fucking Union City. Yep. I never now it's forget. a movie studio. Yeah, it's a movie studio. Yep. I went in there. It was just to kill time, just one day, just to get out the house because we were staying in my auntie's house when we first moved here. I walk in, looking at CDs. I look up to my right, and CeeLo Green is standing yeah. next to me looking at CDs. And I'm like, nah, I can't be. Yeah. So I asked him. I was like, just casually. Like, hey, bro, you, you see CeeLo Green? <laughs> yeah. Like, whoa. I was like, I love that shit you do with Timberland, bro. Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, so. But yeah, it's, it's definitely that situation right there just opened my eyes to the potential of, you know, Absolutely. making something happen in this city. So that's when I kind of. And if you play it right and you, you yeah. connect with the right folks, you can really make something. Yeah. You can really make some noise locally and then from there nationally because. Definitely. You have it here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have, and it's been consistent. It hasn't been like, you know, like some other cities where you may have a couple artists come out. Right, And then the city itself really doesn't hold the music. Yeah. Just the artist kind of comes from there. Yeah. You you know what I'm saying? To where Atlanta is like, no, like this is a farm system. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) I think um, that has a lot to do with the radio stations actually supporting their artists and and backing them to where, you know, um, I do... I, I'm, I'm back and forth between Arizona a lot, and not to even get into the mix too much of, of <laughs> but I've seen certain accusations that there's certain radio stations out there who aren't really sure. fucking with the underground and local artists. And exactly. They're, they're people who are literally buying billboards and calling the station out, and it's it's interesting, you that's, know. That's crazy. But that, that's dope in itself I think because it that kind of shows that there's a resilience and there is a big underground community Absolutely. in Arizona that I'm still learning about to be honest with you because like I like I said grew up in Arizona yeah. but to come back now and and actually hear really fucking dope artists coming from out of Arizona is really cool to me you know um you should because that's your hometown yeah. You know, that that yeah. feels great when you can relate. It's like, you know what? I know exactly what street, what town they're talking about. Right, right, you exactly. Feel, you feel that connection exactly. in the lyrics. Yeah. And that's what people have exactly. to say. That's why I always interview underground artists, man. Gotcha. That's been my mainstay of just talking to underground artists and give everyone an opportunity to give their story. That connection that when someone hears your music, they're like, yo, I know his story. I've seen it. He's, he's doing this. He's from right, here. Right, right. To have that connection. A lot of times, you know, especially back in the day, you didn't have that. You heard a person you based off their music and you wondered what part of the city they were from or what part of the country they're from. You didn't get that information exactly, to them. Exactly. Maybe they did an interview. To right. your point, if someone doesn't want to play them on the radio, they're not going to come for an interview later exactly. on to speak to the DJs. So that's dope that people are like the underground folks are. I always love underground artists more than the traditional pop artists. I, yeah, I, I can definitely feel that. because And then it always seems like when, a, when an artist went, quote unquote, mainstream right. where it's kind of lost and and I don't know as some of that's kind of bougie too because like some people you know oh man I was I knew him back when he was rocking the stage and <laughs> two people in the crush shut up you know what I'm saying <laughs> like but it I understand where they're coming from with that because a lot of artists kind of lose I guess vision of what they started even doing the music for no, you, you can. Know, I think yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. The, the money does change up things because yeah. you're not struggling no more. Right. And then I, I think they're, yeah, and which I think actually labels are kind of getting out of now, which is cool. But I think back then it was a lot of protocol too, to where certain people wanted to hear this yeah. certain type of song from this certain type of artist. And we want yeah. you to look this certain type of way, project this certain type of image. And to where now it's kind of like, just do you, you know? What I mean? Well, <laughs> like, I think that's where the, the indie part comes yeah. into play because a lot of, 
the mu- the mu- when the internet became so prevalent in the mm-hmm. early 2000s, the music industry was hardest hit. Yeah. The film industry was hit too, but they kind of rebounded and figured out how we play in this space. Definitely, definitely. And the music industry just gave, they're like, we don't know what to do. Yeah, true, And true. there was so many ripping of music and stuff like that, free and downloading right. and shit. I don't even think it was the internet. Um, when I, when I, Look, I kind of did some research on that. I, I, I really think it was fucking CDRs and CD burners. Well, yeah, that, that was really that was that was fucked up. That was start of it because I remember yeah. back then when I would walk down the <laughs> avenue, my African dudes would have all the CDs ready. Right, and you're like, and I don't know. I would boom, yeah. I, I, I buy yeah, it. Exactly, you know, I would buy yeah. Tupac and Biggie CD. That's what I did first. It was good. Then mm. I bought the good one. Right, exactly. Right? Yeah. So, but from there, it transitioned to the internet because at that, that point, that's when Napster came out. Yeah, with all the free download music, like, oh, I can just. Oh, yeah. Download this yeah, stuff. Okay, cool. Yeah. And now we have Spotify, you know, iTunes, Tidal, yeah, yeah. which is pretty much the same shit. The, the, yeah, the child, yeah, child of Napster, pretty paying much. Paying like ten bucks a month for it. Okay. And that, but I think the the newer generation didn't grow up with that kind of black market piece. Exactly. So that they and had you know, no problem I was, buying I was it. green when I was young too, because I, I I remember going to New York, right, and, <laughs> and walking down the Ave, and they would have the bootleggers out, yeah. right. And and they would have that shit on a fucking blanket, yep. right? <laughs> and I remember I was walking towards dude, and I don't know who was behind me, but all of a sudden he had to cover up his shit. Yeah. And I was like, bro, like I want to see what you got, like you know. And he's like, bro, like, <laughs> no, like you know, I'm loud as hell. Like it, I want a CD, bro. Like <laughs> what are you doing? Like so, yeah. But I definitely, and then I ended up getting like three CDs from, him and didn't realize. They were bootlegged till I got back to the house and look. I'm like, oh, yeah, this is what's going. On. I'm, I'm thinking I'm buying the real fucking shit off the street. Nah, nah, nah. he he made like, that okay. from the script. I get it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, I get and it. That's now. when like artists were losing yeah. mad money. At the industry, yeah. of course, you know the, the companies were losing mad money. But I think YouTube helped out a lot of indie artists. Absolutely. You know, just coming yeah. out with their music, just lyrically hat popping. Right. You know, even Justin Bieber came from YouTube. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you can't really hate that. Yeah. You know, locally we have Russ here. Yep. You know, Russ, is, I, I love Russ. He doesn't like Russ too much. <laughs> right? No, he doesn't. But his his game is... I, I respect point. the man's... I, I respect his the way he moves. I yeah, put it that, like that. That's, he, how, that's, a, that's a, what I like about him. A couple him of dope songs. My girl likes likes the music, so yeah. I, you know, I but, tolerate it. But I, I do like the fact that, similar yeah. to how you are, you're making everything from scratch. Yeah, exactly. I, and I respect that as well. You know well. what I'm saying? Yeah, so, like, yeah. your, your musicality is, is and your IQ for music is... Way faster than a lot of other artists. I appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Compared to where I'm just going to come in, rap over someone else's beat, which is nothing wrong with that either. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? But for you to create everything from scratch. See, that's exactly what I didn't want to do. And and, really? and you know what? I And no disrespect to anybody who's doing it, because, I, yeah. I mean, there's some people who do it and do it well, but I just, I feel, I always felt like the, the song's been made. Like, why would I... Rap over the guy. That was just me, you know, right. and I, I don't, and to this day, I've just never done it. And that was kind of like my beginning to making beats because I was willing to fucking rap. And, and living in Page, Arizona, wasn't nobody making beats, wasn't nobody, then there was no local studio I could just go to, you know, and so I had to figure it out on my own and ended up having a Radio Shack mic hooked to a fucking. <laughs> I think it was a 48, 486 Sony PC back in the day. Yeah, I remember Trying that. to record in uh, Acid Pro. <laughs> I remember Acid yeah. Pro. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's where it all started from. And, you know, from there, I just kind of just fell in love with it and, yeah. and just started learning things. And when I moved to Atlanta, though, it was kind of a blessing because I was, I was working at Staples off of fucking Camp Creek yep. and wow. ran into... Um, a lady who managed producers at the time and ended up moving into this pretty decent sized house where like every room was just a studio and we got to learn and, and get taught under this dude who was, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, he did all of like the mixing for uncle Luke's shit. Really? Like all the down South bass music that was popping. Like, Oh yeah early 90s and shit oh, yeah. like he had plaques and shit and with his name on it and so I was like okay let me really pay attention yeah. to this dude you know and call him Navigator and just going through that kind of like that training camp and just learning yeah, how to absolutely. observe and and, and kind of take his style put my own shit to it okay I, I see how to maneuver and make shit that I want to hear from 
using his techniques, right. you know, and then putting my own flip to it, I could kind of make some shit that sounded like something, you know? Yeah, so, definitely, man. Yeah, you know, it's just pretty much where it all came from, man. No, that's dope, because I think you can really get the sense of your vibe since yeah. you're creating the music from scratch. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, either whether you're upset, you're sad, you're happy, your your tone is going to be represented not only in the lyrics, but also in the beat. Right, that's what I try to do. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. you're creating all that, and then you're learning the piano. Kudos to your parents, because that's just a skill they gave you. Exactly. Very you true. know, Very that's true. that's a crazy skill you can always rely on. Yeah. And even, I think, for yourself going going forward, the biggest thing is keeping true to yourself. Yeah. Not letting no label get in the way of your creativity. I think that's that's what hurts a lot of people too is when they stop creating and they're just trying to make a hit. True. True. Like, don't go after the hit. Yeah. Don't try to make something that everyone else has because. You can always try to make a summer song. I, I had to learn that myself. You know, um, uh, I went through my emulation stage sure. to where, you know, the hottest artist that was out, I was trying to make a song to sound just like the shit that they're yeah. doing and, and try to even make my voice kind of, <laughs> you know, resemble what their drawl or, you know, however they were saying shit. And it wasn't until I got out of that that people started kind of noticing what I was doing. So, yeah. yeah, it's definitely staying true to yourself, not kind of falling into that. You know, I'm not saying don't don't take, um, what do you say, inspiration sure. from people. But at the same time, I would say do your best to do, do how you would do that, yeah. I guess you could say, not necessarily trying to do it like them. That makes it no, that makes a lot of sense because that's yeah. how I started with the podcast. Like, gotcha. I was listening to mad people doing podcasts, and I copied them. Gotcha. Right. I I, I didn't have my voice yet. I know my style yet. Right. I think back then I said with anything though, I, with music, like exactly. you said, like yeah. you don't know yet. You don't know what right, you can do, right, how right. you're gonna do it. So, I kept on doing it, and I'm like, you know what? I sound too much like this dude. Yeah. Where's my voice? Like, definitely, who am I? Yeah. Now I was like, no, just be you. And it's so yeah. hard for people to be themselves. Yeah, it is. Because we all have is. our representative. It's, yep. There or it is. Or we bring a girl, you go on a job interview, you're always being in somebody else but yourself. Right. Unless you're behind closed doors. Yeah. Or with people you're mad comfortable with. Right. But it's like to be you just all day long, throughout, no matter what, is like... It's a hard thing to do. It's, well, it's so yeah. fucked up, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. It's like we should just be happy yeah. who we are, but we're not because we're always looking at the next person. Right, we, and I think it's, it's more of like, I, what what are they going to think of me if I yeah. do this and this yeah. and this, you know? And, uh, yeah. It's one thing. I, I mean, that's why I, I kind of respect a lot of these young niggas and, and who, you know, you get a lot of the, the older fucking rappers who pissed off at the, the young dude, which makes no fucking sense to me because... Nah, I'm going to bring that up too. Yeah. <laughs> it makes no sense to me at all because you you were young doing what the fuck you wanted to do at some point in time. So, you know, how how can you hate that? You know what I mean? So, Hip-hop had to evolve, yeah. right? So when I was growing up and everything was so lyrical and the beats, and people had to understand, like, hip-hop is very regional and the sound comes from that region. So, like, if people really think about it, right? So you look at when New York came out, you know, with hip-hop and, sh- and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Dolce is, is bothering you. <laughs> nah, you're good. But, um... New York is such raw and heavy and hard because it's cold. Yeah, definitely. You know, it's cold for so long. Right. You know what I'm saying? Then you hear, so you go to LA, you hear their sound, it's sunny with palm it's trees. Exactly. So you, you have that, that laid, laid back, back you, know. you know, so yeah. you're going to have that influence. Exactly. You know what definitely. I'm saying? So when the South came about, and people were, I remember in New York, people were hating people in the South, going, they don't know how to rap. Exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. And when New York fell off for a number of years, it wasn't so much that we, we fell off, we just didn't embrace other hip hop, yeah, yeah, that's definitely. We did, you know what I'm saying? And because of that, that's when we fell off. Yeah, y'all definitely had like we're the only ones doing it right. Yeah, type, exactly. You know, attitude. Yep. And so it was like, and that's the right, cockiness well, of a New Yorker. You know that's what I'm cool. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna do it how we do it, and you know, which which I understand because I grew up on New York music, and I can definitely i I had to I had to. Um, Acquire the taste of southern music. Yeah. Nah, I love it. Don't yeah. I like because you have to get you have to live it. You do. More I, than, I didn't understand that until yeah, I moved here. Yeah, you have to live it. Yeah. It's it's more of a of a lifestyle than a than a than a genre of music. Absolutely. Once you once you hit the clubs out here, you 
you know, you leave the club and you hit your Waffle House and you, you know. You get, you, you get the story, get the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you definitely understand why the music sounds like it does. And, and, Absolutely. And, and when, you, when you hit the strip club and you see them booties bouncing, <laughs> yep. you're going to... You're gonna want to come back, yeah. and you're gonna really understand. You're gonna gain love for that music exactly. because you know it's 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 definitely a different. It's a different experience than anywhere else on this planet. I would say Absolutely. definitely Atlanta is, is is definitely different for that. Well, obviously, and like I said, hip hop had to evolve, man, because yeah. just like rock and roll, yeah, you know, there's different subcategories in rock and roll. Right, you have your right. punk, you have your grunge, you have your hard and soft metal, your alternative rock. Exactly. And hip hop was just so like again that New York style hip hop from right. the original parts, and then when other regions started taking it over, started mixing different things and getting the vibe, and it's like nothing wrong with that. Even now exactly. with the whole auto tunes and the mumble rapping, right? You don't have to like it. Like I fucking love designer. Like, yeah, but I it, fucking love designer. I don't. And you just gotta. I can't understand shit <laughs> like half the shit, but he's, he's. You like designer? I fucking love designer. I mean, me, I do. You love Uzi Vert? Yeah, I love Uzi. Yeah, that's what I'm I saying. love Uzi Vert. I mean, so. I love, I love, I love Trippy Red. His fucking album is so dope to me. I, I don't know why because I actually I, do, I think I do know why is because the a lot of the melodies that these kids are doing are, are, are real alternative rock yeah ish type melodies and it's really reminding me of of some oh, of the metal and shit that I you know used to listen to and yeah. it's really interesting to me. I like it a lot. You know, because in the '90s hip hop. They took a lot of the seventies music. Definitely. Yeah, they got yeah. soul, the so, little R, yeah, back yeah. in the R and B, right? Mm -hmm. Which R and B is dead now. So someone bring it back. <sighs> but um, yeah. um but now that's your point. Mm -hmm. Newer artists saying, No, hold on, there's another genre of music we can kinda of steal from right. and make it popping. Yeah. And the artist you just name is doing that. Like yeah, it's like definitely. which is dope as fuck. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. I hate it when people down yeah. it, it, it sucks. Because what is my my parents were talking shit about hip hop. In the 90s. Right. It wasn't their music. Exactly. Every exactly. generation fucking do, does exactly. it. Exactly. Just like, I'm, I'm pretty sure their parents were like, what the hell is this Motown shit? And then turn <laughs> exactly. that off. Turn on some gospel. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, they, Did know. I ever do that to you? No, no right? Because I, I, I figured that, listen, if, if, if he keeps me on point, then I'm going to keep up. You're in up. touch with your youth. You yeah, know exactly. I mean? in, in some capacity. You know what I mean? And I agree with that because I have a daughter, you know, she'll be um, nine in October. And, awesome. And so, you know, she loves, she loves little Uzi Vert. She loves, uh, was it uh, Playboy Cardi and all these, all these, you know, and, you know, I, I encourage a love for music. You know what I mean? I, I, you have I, some, to, man. I, I, I'm the type of, I'm going to teach you that there's certain, you know, aspects of it that, that you may not want to involve yourself in, you know, when you're exactly. of age, you know, what can I do? But at the same time, you know, I, I can give you a guidance to it, but I'm definitely not that parent who's going to be like, no, nah, you can't listen to that. No, nah, that's what I did with my kids, too. You're going to gravitate towards what you like anyway. You, know you have I mean? to. And yeah. you have to let them be organic with it and let them understand it. But it comes down to parenting, too, right? So yeah. I let him listen to whatever he wanted to listen to. I listen to Jay-Z, Biggie, whoever in the car. Mm -hmm. They're cursing. I know he's cursing the back with them. Right. You know, he, exactly. yeah, right? So <laughs> he's laughing. Right? right. He's making sure I don't hear him. Yeah. But I know he's doing it. Come on. Right? Yeah, exactly. So... I'm an ignorant, but my biggest thing is making sure they understand, listen, this is just a song. Right. This is lyrics. Exactly. You know, this is someone's fantasy or idea or dream that they came up with. Exactly. You know, not everybody's fucking gangster. Right. Not everybody has all these cars. They're all exactly. rented. You know what I'm saying? Right. They're jewels. They all got them from the wish app. Exactly. So <laughs> it's like, it's like don't, don't pay attention to that. Right. But if it makes you feel a certain way, you're vibing with it, and it matches you, love it. It's music. That's what music is supposed to do. I agree. But if you raise them right, they're not going to follow the music as its guide. Exactly. And that's the thing. Like, so you think, shouldn't. No, you shouldn't. At all. You know? It should, music. Same thing with TV, movies, video games, all this shit. And it's like, exactly. you can't blame any of that shit for, you for can't. Sh your shitty parenting. <laughs> that's the thing, man. You're right. Because you know? <laughs> mad people do have shitty parenting and yeah. they want to blame everything else but them fuck themselves. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so you've been in Atlanta for how long now? Um, let's see. Since 04. So what? Well, I've been, I got here. I got here in O two. Terrible, man. So that's about what, fifteen years. Yeah, about fifteen. Yeah, thirteen years? for me. I guess it would be. I've been here 19. since O two, so that's about seventeen years. Wait, nineteen. Yeah. Yeah, about fifteen for me. So fifteen, 15 for you. So that's yeah, a long yeah. time then. So. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I mean, I'm pretty much. Uh, I got the experience. 
the old ATL a little bit. Yep, I guess the day here. that they talk about, yeah. you know, when uh, I got here when Jeezy was just about to be a superstar. It, yes, but he had the whole issue with the freaking with snowman. the fucking snowman t shirt. That was a big yeah, issue. That was yeah. huge. That was yeah, huge. I remember that. Yeah. And then, then, um, then the little Gucci and Jeezy beef yes. happened, and then. Uh, you know, you had the Yola the Greats and all them that's guys right. popped out, and you know, and it's right when BMF got busted. Yep, and that's right. Yeah, it was it was, it was an like interesting the, it was, time. It was so weird. It was the, like the end of the Freak Nick era. Yeah, definitely. You definitely. know what I'm saying? It was like yeah. the end of that, pretty much. Yeah, D4L. It was just starting to pop. You know, yeah. the, it, it really the the young nigga wave was starting with that. I, I feel like is yeah. when when we when D4L. You had um, the was it the Nuck if you buck kids? That's right. At the time, yeah. they, they kind of I think they really started this new young nigga wave in Atlanta. I guess you no, could I, say. no, I, I agree with that. I yeah. think what also made it difficult too is that they when they shut down Buckhead. At one point, Buckhead was a beautiful it was yeah. a strip of just clubs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they shut that down because people true. were just yeah going wild, going out there. wild about yeah. it. Right. So yeah. after they shut that, it made people. Rethink and move in a different way around the city. Definitely, and then they stop. Uh, close. They close the clubs at three now. So yeah, yeah, it was, it was like earlier six. Before. It really it was like twenty four yeah, hours. Yeah, it really was. Yeah, it's pretty much. It yeah. was because I think yeah. they brought it back to one or two. Then yeah. they yeah, it back up that. again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they answered back up to three or four. But it never really got popping like it was back nah, in the day. No, nah. yeah. and even strip clubs nowadays, you know, like the strip clubs aren't as prevalent as they once were before. Right, right. Yeah. You know, because the cities are changing the ordinance and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. some places they they could close one that's. Maybe a mile, two miles down the road from here. Gotcha. And the certain clubs, they they can't get naked anymore. Which yes, I noticed. which is that's, weird. Yeah, interesting. Which, which that's yeah. the staple of Atlanta. Right. That's yeah. That's what they, people you come have to. Naked Atlanta strippers like, yeah. and the food in the strip exactly, club. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's what we've been known for. Right. The food and strip club is bomb. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. It's just interesting. You got to go to certain ones, especially that like, you know if you're gonna be in the hood, go to go to a uh, Blue Flame. Yeah, definitely, you know definitely hit the flame if you're, if you're a tourist. You know, you have to. It's a bluff. Be yeah. careful. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely be careful. But um, you know, you you enjoy yourself. Um, Magic City, you enjoy yourself. But Magic City, you're gonna City, come out of pocket a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Follies. <laughs> yeah, Follies. Follies not too far from yeah, here. Yeah. You know, your Allure, Oasis, Pink yeah. Pony. You definitely. Know, give a mad shout out to the strip clubs in, in Atlanta. Gotcha. But yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I, I agree. But uh, my, I think my job as a dad is to make sure my daughter never has to work at any of those. No, I, no absolutely. I <laughs> totally agree with to you. All the yeah, yeah, absolutely. Do your thing. Hey, make your money. Exactly. I can't. I can't be mad at that. They figured out. They figured out the niche. If I could strip, I'd do it fucking too. Hey. You know what I'm saying? So, but man, like, what's what is your album going to be called? The album's called Aqua Blue, um, which you know is the color of the new hundred dollar bill. Yeah, um, which I which is everybody's bottom line. I think in this day and age, um, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? I don't think that's my job to no, <laughs> no, that's specify. I think that's kind of what my my um, I kind of have an internal battle. If you yeah. once you when you listen to the CD, is kind of a battle between that a little bit that's dope. about you know real feelings and also indulgence and yeah. you know I say a lot of the regular shit that. A lot of rappers do, but I, I feel like I try to say it a little cooler. That's dope. So, yeah. No, I think I think you do do it well. I, I um, I think I know you do it well. Um, it comes down to I think to for you to just stay creative, man. You know, the business is always gonna get be in there. That's part yeah. of it to learn it. Some artists do well with it. Some artists don't. Right. Right. You know, um, if you look at Jay Z, he's a billionaire now. He, it's a he beautiful he, thing. He, it is because it's, yeah. it's it's showing the next gen that's coming up of hip hop. Right. There's more just to that. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And being indie, your masters are yours. You know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, you can look at the the, the, the old town road kid. I mean, yeah. you say what you want about it. I mean, and I mean, there's a lot of people who are hating on that too. I, 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 mean, I hate that because if people are like, man, I would never buy it. I didn't expect you to buy that song. Like, no. You're I known as man. I expected like my that, kid to buy it. came up with that? <laughs> with, um, Billy Ray Cyrus? Yeah, yeah. I, so, this is my this is my take on it. Yeah. It came out, I was like, what the fuck is this? Right. That's my first reaction, right? Yeah. Second listen to, it was like, what is he saying? Then I heard it in the car. Yeah. Because car music in the car is different. It's different, yeah. You know it, what I'm it saying? It so, a little different. Yeah, so yeah. I heard it in the car. Right. Okay. And I was like, nice beat. Okay, then he, then he caught me with the whole Wranglers on my booty. I was like, yo, that's that's all right. That's it still was funny. It was yeah. funny. I was yeah. like, that's dope. Yeah. I was like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. And then when I seen the visual, the video. 
Video is very dope. I was very say, fucking dope video. I, I, I can't hate. I, yeah, I, I couldn't hate on that it. point because yeah. he wasn't trying to be gangster. He wasn't, he wasn't trying, trying to be, to be country, yeah, exactly. even though he was dressing like country. Right. But he wasn't trying to be anything but him. And and what I liked how he 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 kind of walked that line very nicely. He did. He, he didn't. He was. It wasn't like he was making fun of. Country it wasn't a caricature of, exactly. of country. It was like. This, no, is, respect. My, this yeah. is my respectable take on the yeah. fucking genre. And That's it. I, you know, I respect that. You know, but it, it was a lot of a lot of grown ass men that were like, you know, this song sucks. You know, like, bro, I, I didn't expect you to, to like, like it. it. Yeah. Like, I don't think that he expected yeah. you to like it, bro. <laughs> and that's what I was telling you about this right before. Yeah. I was like, I'm telling you about how to just play to your audience. Right, and don't, don't worry about the haters. Right, right. Like, if you hate me, that means you're not my audience. Exactly. I'm cool with that. Yeah. But the person next to you who is, mm-hmm. that's who I'm fucking with. And at the same time, we're sitting here talking about fucking yeah. little Nas X and exactly. Old Town Road. And you know yeah. what I mean? It's like, and he came out the closet too, right? Like Supposedly. That's that's an interesting... I I, I, I saw the tweet. I, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's a supposed thing. He didn't necessarily come out and was like, I am this. But he's put like little... He's, he's on that Young Thug type <coughs> vibe where he's like, Y'all, y'all figure it out. You know what I mean? Which, if he if he did, I know he said something about putting uh, uh, a skyscraper in his. In his I think yeah, his, it's a skyscraper with a rainbow bro, on the so front. So it's kind of like you he know, was like I, I tried to make it obvious for y'all or something like that, but right. he never literally was like, "This is me." But I mean, I, I mean, if all roads point, then I guess that's the directions. And I think <laughs> I think nowadays, he, I think it was a smart move for him. Yeah, I, I think hip hop yeah, is ready for it. I yeah. think. I think there was always gay rappers anyway. I mean, come on. They're, they're just like there was always a gay president sometime, right? I think. More than likely. It had to be. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You just I mean, when you be. look at, even back in the 40s, like, was the, some dude named Brock Hudson or something. Mm-hmm. He was like the fucking Brad Pitt of the time. Like, yeah. all the girls wanted to fuck him, and he was the gayest dude in fucking Hollywood. So it was like, <laughs> you know, that hasn't changed. It you has. It never has. Movies, I think so. people just make, became more conservative, and that became more of the thing yeah. not to do. But that's always been in in our history. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Having having um, having uh, either lesbians or gay people around. Right. Right. It's yeah. The same shit. To be honest, definitely some, it? some gangster delicious Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> there's some dudes back in back in the day that I knew that were gay. That they'll, they'll fuck you up though. Yeah. I mean, hey, they're and, and, and that's no disrespect. No. But do choose their lifestyle. Cause I'm, exactly. Absolutely. I'm, I, my um, I have a, my older brother is gay, and I've, I've got a lot of go gay. People people in my family so it's, I mean it's, it's your lifestyle choice I mean it is what it is and, it. and my thing is is if if you are you and you're comfortable in your skin then why is it necessary for you to feel like you need to tear down somebody else like for what they choose to do is exactly that, it's fucking stupid to me but it really is dude like yeah. that's that's my thing I think to we're going through such a transition now right here mm-hmm. in the states and Georgia's like definitely going through a transition because yeah. The rest of the state compared to the city, Atlanta, yeah. is totally different. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You know, there's this country backwards people in Georgia. Definitely, definitely. You know, and then you have Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then you have Metro Atlanta, because people understand, like, there's no other neighboring city that fucks with us, because the other states are really kind of not really well off. Alabama yeah, yeah, definitely. is still and, back. And that's why a the lot of The part of Tennessee these... we're connected to is still kind of country as hell. Right. South Carolina, the whole state is country as hell. Yeah, a lot of these rappers go go to these country towns and get fucked up and robbed and all that type yeah, shit. Yeah, man, these niggas like, don't give two shits no, about this man, shit here. No. Like, then nigga, we still hungry. Like, we yeah. shit. <laughs> Come down here flexing if you want to. Absolutely, <laughs> man. So, and you got to yeah. be careful with that. I think yeah. it comes down to like how you perceive yourself. And if you're gonna go someplace, you know, like, like they say, you have to check in, man. Definitely, I, I agree with that. And 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 I, a lot of niggas, they they like. New York niggas and and, and 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 I'm gonna call out Atlanta niggas on that shit too because I feel like I'm partial to Atlanta niggas. Yeah. Like you can't go everywhere on that. I'm from here and here is the toughest spot you ever could go and I'm gonna whoop everybody's ass who could. Nah, like man. stop it, bro. Like I'm I, and I'm if if you can whoop everybody's ass by all means, nigga, talk your shit. But at the same time, I'm not that nigga. I'm the nigga yeah. who if you disrespect me. We're going to tussle. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm going to give you a run for your money. I'm not going to say, see him and be like, I'm going to beat everybody's ass. I'm going to beat that nigga's ass. I'm going to beat. Right. Nah, I'm going to give you a run for your money, though. Like, we we definitely going to. We definitely going to have a, have a time. But, uh, and I, I but other I, than that, you know. I'm, I can't afford it. I was, when I came to Atlanta, <laughs> I was the same way, though. Because yeah. I was like, I was so Brooklyn. I, I, you know, I, I was 
did yeah. my whole life. Right. I came to Atlanta. I was 24. Yeah. And I'm 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 in South Lake Mall, mm-hmm. right? Right in Jonesboro. Shout out to Clayco. Mm-hmm. And these, these these dudes were across from me from the other other way, and they were looking at my kicks. Yeah. In New York, you know, you already know you can't look at no one's kicks. You can't right, look at another right. person. That's a fight. Right. Yeah. Here is like people just making eye contact with oh, you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> And yeah, I'm like, yo, I say, yeah. I was telling the wife here at the time, I said, yo, I said, I'm gonna have to know, get ready. Yeah. It's, these dudes gonna, we have to do something. Yeah. They come over, I'm like, yo, what's up? Yeah. They were like, they were taking, the, they were taking the back. I was like, yo, what you trying? Just, yeah, yeah. You, you scoping my shit? They were like, nah, we didn't, never showed those kicks before. Just looking yeah. at them. They were mad nice. Yeah. And I was still acting like right. an ass. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But then I had to learn. I said, yo, what the fuck? I said, the, right. We, I said, we gotta go. Cause they're gonna try to jump. Yeah. Like, I didn't have, they, just, they yeah, were shocking. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah like, right, right. So I was like, what yeah. the hell did this it's happen? I, yeah, shit. I was like, it's I was like, right. Twilight Zone shit. Right, I was like, right. what the fuck's going on here? <laughs> and I had to learn exactly that. that yeah, yeah. There's different rules everywhere. Definitely, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I couldn't take the rules I had from New York mm-hmm. and apply them at all to Atlanta. Yeah. Now, hood is hood to the point to where, you know, you step into the fucking hood, you yeah. got to respect. Absolutely. You got to go in with respect. Yeah. Whoever's the, the main motherfucker, you got to make sure that. Yo, yeah. I got you though. I'm not trying to right. disrespect nobody. I just want to run my hair. My lady's over here. That's you had to come through. Yeah. Cause if not, they'll get you. Yeah, true. Yeah. Plain and simple. That's, and that's anywhere. Yeah. And, but if you try to walk your way and try to say, yo, I'm the big baddest motherfucker around, it's always that's when you're gonna get fucked up. Somewhere. Exactly. Yeah, There's you. someone always bigger and better than you. Yep. That's why I tell my kids, like, yo, I was like, you're not from the hood. Yeah. You were yep. raised in a fucking cul-de-sac. Right. <laughs> so it's like, so you don't know. I feel you. And it makes no sense for me to take them back there anyway. No right. doubt like, it, formed, it formed me. Right. It gave me perspective in a different way. Yeah. And, and the way they're going to live now, totally different perspective for them, which I wanted for them. Exactly, exactly. I want my kids to grow up square as fuck. You know? Yeah, like, I, I, I don't want to glorify the hood like it's been glorified. Yeah, yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, when I first moved here, I, I got kicked out of my house, so... <laughs> I was wilding out, you know, yeah. and I ended up having to move to to Washington Road of all places, and it was kind of fucked up. Back Washington then. Road, exit one. It was kind of <laughs> fucked up back then, you know. Um, it was called Club Candlewood, place called Garden Court across the street. I was in that little area all the time, and you know, uh, dude, I used to get like all my little weed from. Like yeah. he got shot in the head on Halloween. It was, I mean, it wasn't wasn't the worst of hoods, but it damn sure wasn't the best. You yeah, know what I mean? Absolutely. So, you know. Dude downstairs from me, I wake up and you know smelling crack coming from his goddamn kitchen. Like he's always cooking up and shit. So it was just, you know, shit. Like I, why why would I want my kids to to talk to, to that? Yeah, experience, experience that. that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Wow. Yeah, to me, yeah, it's, it's now I look back and I'm like, yeah, okay, it's interesting to to see that aspect of life and 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 look back and say I'll never go back there. But yeah, why, you know, even repping that shit is like. Yes, yeah, my thing too. Like, you know, I got asked a lot, and I'm gonna go back to Best Buy, and I'm like, um, no, um, I'm not. One is not my Brooklyn anymore. Right. It's been gentrified, which I have no problem with gentrification because right. we did nothing with it for 40, 50 years. True, true. We opened up a fucking bodega. Yeah. So if we did nothing with it, why am I mad that Susie and Jimmy came through with a muffin shop and a and a fucking microbrewery? Right. Yeah. My bad. I didn't think of it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like. Now, if we, were, if we were doing something with the neighborhood and people just came in and took it down, I'm like, yeah, that's different. Right. But we fucked it up. Pissing on the floor, smearing shit on elevated buttons. Why, why are we mad that someone wants to clean up the neighborhood yeah. and we fucked up the neighborhood? Yeah. Don't get me wrong, we built a culture from it. Hip-hop came from that. Right. You know what I'm saying? And the struggle is real. And, not, you know, you hear everyone struggle. But it's like, you can get yourself out the struggle if you put your mind and heart into it. Like, yeah, I mean, growing up in the projects and... Me living now, where I live at in Atlanta, is like night and day. Right. But I had to do that for myself. Yeah. No one showed me how to do that. Exactly. And not everyone makes out the hood. Yeah, and 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 what's crazy is that all that shit is relative in in, in a way because I remember watching an interview with Akon and he said when he came from fucking Africa and he went to the hood he. Thought that was like the fucking Hilton. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, would y'all got running water? Like, what the fuck? fuck yeah. You know what I mean? Like, so it's all relative. Like, it really is, just, man. so it's 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 not as bad as no. we perceive sometimes. You know, we absolutely we're we are the creators of the the jails of our minds sometimes and we'll make our situations out to be a lot worse than 
then we do. it really can, or, or really in all reality is. You know? okay, at that point, we're looking for sympathy. Not even empathy at that point. Yeah, just strict just sympathy. sympathy. Yeah, yeah. What was me? Help me out. Exactly. And, and that's the thing, that's what a lot of people tend to not, not understand. Like, mm-hmm. Your success is based off how much hard work you're willing to do for yourself. Right. How much risk and challenge you want to put on. Like right now, you're putting yourself out there. Yeah. You're taking risks by putting music out. You're taking a chance and hoping someone likes your shit. Exactly. Whether they like it or not, I hope you don't stop. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> I appreciate saying? that. Because you got yeah. at least one fan right here. For sure. And of course, your, your lady Jay, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Absolutely. Which, check out the podcast. She was the last podcast we had. Absolutely. Um, Miss Jay Brown. Yes, indeed. Um, and you, you just have to continue going forward. Keep on putting music out. Keep on putting music out. Do a gig here. Do a gig there. Get yeah. to know some more heads. Chill. Another song. Like just keep on grinding. Absolutely. What's gonna happen is that you're gonna be successful. <laughs> right, exactly. That's really the only fucking exactly, outcome. No, no exactly, doubt there's going to be yeah. roadblocks and challenges because yeah. you're, you're growing and leveling up. And that's just life. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. but the outcome is success. Right, right. You know, whether it be failure, if there is, is based off you not understanding something mm-hmm. or you just fucking up. Right, very true. And that's fine if you learn from it and rebound and keep it moving forward. If you don't rebound from it, then that's when, oh, what was me? I was, Absolutely. I was, I was once here. Yeah. And now I'm here and then that's it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Because people tend to have, their egos are so fucking big. Right. They want to run right. off their old shit. Exactly. And then and then a lot of people think the money's the answer, which is not, not at all. Because if you're a like, fucked up person, exactly. money makes you more fucked yeah. up. If yeah. you're a nice person, you give, you'd probably donate more. Right. Exactly. So, I mean, and, and that shit makes nothing, no difference in, in how you feel and no difference in your mental health and no difference in... In your perception of yourself, in the at the end of the day, because you Absolutely. still got to look in the mirror, you know. Yes, indeed. At the end of the day, so you know. Oh my bad. No, you good, man. <laughs> you super good. Yeah. But man, I'm telling you, man, it's it's yeah. it's uh, it's a new day and age, especially with technology. Look what we're doing here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like back in the day, we would have to been in the fucking super studio. Right. To exactly. Get shit done. Exactly. Yeah. You know, you can do shit, everything in your crib right now. It's yeah. a, it's affordable. Yeah. yeah, it's an investment. Definitely. But it's super cheap. Yeah. That's how I record, you know. Yeah. I record at the spot. Just got my own little setup, not not too much different from, from <laughs> this. We're in the radio, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it, I think that's the biggest thing people, the perception people think that you got to have the traditional big-ass studio. No doubt right. it's comfortable to be, have that. It's cool looking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, I mean, it's great. It's cool, and then yeah. if you have somebody who knows what they're doing and how to use the shit in there, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. That's, that's great, Absolutely. you know, but... You just all those fucking buttons and switches. You're still like, just <laughs> turning on Fruity Loops and making a beat. Like, what's? I don't understand what the point of that whole shit is. is. You know, to be we'll, honest with you, we'll buy him Fruity Loops. He makes yeah, beats. We'll make him buy him Fruity Loops pretty soon. Sure. I used Fruity Loops back in the day. I had a group. Mm-hmm. I was living in, in, in Clayton County, and I was I was producing beats, and we had a group in my basement. And Fruity Loops was was the shit to use. Cause I couldn't afford Pro Tools. Yeah. You know, Pro Tools was hella expensive. Yeah, yeah. So and Fruity Loops was the next best best thing. I was like, yep. bet, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. And um, man, that was like that was years ago. And I was like, he's making mess. You know what? Go back to Fruity Loops. Let's get you to, yeah. simple. Has all the plugins you need. Absolutely, let's, you let's can use any plugin. With yeah, it. exactly. So let's, let's let's make it happen. Shout out to FL Studio <laughs> for real. <laughs> make a lot of beats and a decent amount of money off. Yeah, off you guys. I, I think appreciate I, it. I think that's what people need to understand, man. It's like, you know, it's, it's not that difficult. What's difficult is, is your mental stability. You have to take a chance in yourself. Absolutely. You just got to say, fuck it, I'm, I'm going to do it. Yeah. And then you have to do it consistently, though. Yeah. That's the biggest shit. Agreed. You know what I'm saying? If you want to do it once in a while and say you're, you're a hip-hop artist, you're not. You're not. Yeah, yeah. You're not. You, did, you, you have a hobby. True, true. And that's really it. If you really want to truly grind and feel the pain, and understand that it is a fucked up business to get into, and you're willing to go into that. Absolutely. You you have to have a mindset that's super fucking strong and understanding that you got to be nimble. You got to be able to pivot whenever you need to. Definitely, you definitely have to have family around. Like, oh get, man, you do. That's your people's yeah. here. Son you, you got to. That's, that's dope as fuck. Because I mean, it's it's you got to have people who understand the vision as well and who are willing to I, sacrifice. You have with to, you, dude. You know, because we're, we're building we're building an empire here, right? Yeah. So, wifey has her own YouTube channel. Dope. So we got that going on. He uh, he writes. He gonna put out. He put out his little short story out on Amazon already. Oh, that's dope as fuck. I wrote two books last year. He makes beats as well. He's going to school for for journalism for communications. Nice. My other son, he, he's light skin. He raps. Nice. Be sensitive. He's light skin. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. Nice. Um, 
my my daughter, she has her own eyelash business. Nice. Um, my other daughter, Charlotte, she can sing. She can draw her ass off. I have little ones as well. I have nine kids. So wow, my, oldest, my, my, old, my oldest son, he taught himself how to play guitar from scratch. Just from listening. That's a blessing. Yeah, yeah he's f- super freaking talented. Wow. Um, so he's in the band. Uh, so we have all these creative folks. I'm like, yo, I'm not going to stay for that. Yeah. I want, I want to grow that. Let's, let's make that flourish and chill with me. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. Be around when I'm meeting good people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Let's network. You, just, you can never know what can happen for it, but that's good. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And so when I did this, I'm talking to people from all over the place. You're my first in person, too, to let you know. Oh, really? That's fucking you're, dope. You're my first in person. Yes, indeed. You know what I'm saying? So you, you're going to get that. That's dope that, as that fuck. Big, that's a big nod right yeah, there. Yeah. I'm speaking to people from across the world, from Kuwait to Bali. That's like, dope. I'm fucking around with everybody. And it's really for brown and black people. That's you know dope. what I'm saying? I tell people all the time, like, my podcast is not called a podcast. It's called Johnny Nomad Presents. I'm presenting your story. I'm presenting you. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? And, th- and that's the biggest thing I want to do make sure that brown and black people have. The opportunity to see other people like themselves successful. Absolutely. That there are entrepreneurs out there. There's fucking scientists and there's writers and there's poetry and you name it, we have it. And we shouldn't fucking not have it on display. Makes sense, you know what I'm saying? Like definitely. The music is there great. Yeah. But what about everything else behind it? Right, right, the engineer, right. Engineer. Yeah. The people that you don't know about, the ghost writers. Absolutely. Hip hop always wanted to hide ghost writers. I'm not sure why. Yeah, that's yeah. In music, there's always been ghost writers. Always. Come on. That's that's, that's a part of yeah. it. Britney Spears and, and J Lo had a wrote a song. Shit. Exactly. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, Shanti wrote a couple of freaking yeah. J Lo joints. Yeah. So it's like Biggie wrote all of Junior Mafia's album. And exactly. Little, like, and so, little Kim shit. So, yeah, yeah, so it's always been he wrote puffy shit. Even freaking Mace wrote for puffy shit. Yeah. So it's like, there's nothing wrong with that. You I know, I agree. Even down to NWA, like, Easy E. Dr. Dre had to teach him how to rap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he had to break it up so much so he could actually piece it together to make right. it sound like it has some flow to it. That's crazy. Isn't it? Yeah. So it's like, but if you love it enough, if you want to fuck with it and be a student of it, yeah. then make it happen. I agree. On the real. Just go after it. Make it happen. And that's why I, that's why I, bring, I bring everybody here to yo, man, what do you have? What's your story? If you have a cool-ass story that I'm interested in, mm-hmm. bet. That means someone's out there is going to be interested, too. Yeah. And that's how I, I kind of just equate it to. Like, yo, if it hits my buttons, I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh, man, this sounds like a good story. Right, right. Just get it on. For sure. And I don't care about the numbers. My whole thing is about getting the story out there. Because now it's a story you shared with me that can share with a bunch of other people. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have the link to say, you know what? Come check out my stuff. Boom, I'm here doing this, talking about. Is this a big up for you too? Another nod yeah, for you. I appreciate it. And you can say, you know what? I was his first one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. More to come. For you sure. know what I'm saying? No shit. No matter how, you know, how big the wherever this takes me, I always no. I'm definitely will always come back here. No, I come, I'm gonna do, sure. tell you, man, like this is this is moving in the right direction for me right now. The, the the next the next goal for next year. Mm-hmm. But this year, next six months is more in persons, right? Definitely. Next year. To be in my own studio. Right now we're in the crib. Yeah. Right now we're in my bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I'm setting up our other spots in the house to where I can do a piece in the living room. Or right. I can do a piece in our kitchen and the counter. Yeah, so yeah. I'm gonna have different movement within yeah, the podcast. Yeah, that's dope as hell. Just to be chill, you coming right, through. Right, different looks. You know, we yeah. may have the mic, we may not. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We may be outside chilling. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Just switch everything up on his head and say, yo, that it's about the story. Yeah. No, it's, not, it's not about the microphone. I, you know, I have this, this I'm making some shirts pretty soon, take one mic and a guest. Yeah. That's it. That's, That's what I freaking need. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I love hip hop. I grew up in it. You're right. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to make sure that underground hip hop artists had a voice or a chance to get on someplace. Be like, yo, it's your platform. What you want to do with it? I appreciate it, man. Let's, let's make that happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. when um, I met, I met you know, Jay and then... Um, she put me on to you, and then I'm like, yo, he's local. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. This is what's up. And I was like, bet, let me see your, your music video. I said, like, yeah. I said, like, this is good shit. Because I get passed on some, on, I pass on some artists because this shit is whack. I feel you. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody's good. I, I can dig that. You know, and I, I, tell some, I tell some artists, like, no, I say, like, let me know when you grow some more. That's, that's interesting you say that because, like, a lot of, it, here in Atlanta, it's, it, the, the market's very oversaturated. It's, it's like, Please, everybody and their grandma we got a mixtape dropping next everybody week. Mixtape. You know? Everybody's on auto tunes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you know, I, it, I I'm often reluctant to even tell people I do music. Sometimes when I first meet them, because nah, man, I don't should. want them to look at me like ah, you're just another one of them. You know, let them dreamer. think that. 
No, that listen. You, I think you need to be a dreamer. Yeah, yeah. I think that's how that's how things start. True, true. That's the incubation of it, right? True, true. Very You're dreaming true. about something, but you're putting shit out. Yeah. To, listen, I think what people don't don't understand is that putting a video out ain't no easy task. Not at all. Yeah. So once you get to that to that point, you've yeah. leveled up. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? And all those videos, um, I um I had people like um actually Jay shot um my first video. I think it was um. The one out in the desert. Yeah, yeah. She shot that for me. Um, That's dope. And then I edited it. And then um, same thing with this um, this last video I did. My homeboy had Honcho. He shot it for me. And then um, edited it. And That's it. Up, you know. And um, I had not to be forthcoming. Shoot the. I shot it off my iPhone. Like that, I shot the video because it's, it's 4K. I mean, it's, you know. <laughs> it's dope. That's all you need. Yeah, it's a 4K 60 frames per second. You can get the dope ass, like, slow motion scenes in there <laughs> exactly. and all that cool ass shit. So I'm like, well, fuck it. You know, let's do this thing. Dude, like, and that, that's, that's what I tell folks, man. Like, yeah. you already have a device that, that's how I started. I started, I did my first podcast on my iPhone. I did my first guest interview in the back of a Pet Boys. Wow. Because I was interviewing. A manager that was from Brooklyn, he was an ex-boxer that became a coach. Wow. Um, and I just put my iPhone on the table. Went to and, work. And then started just talking. That's what's up. You you just have to start. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you're gonna if you're gonna rap, rap into your phone. If that's all you got, yep. just just do it. You know, there's apps out there you can you can buy, you can make beats with. Yeah. It's not the most robust, but it's just to get you started. Yeah, yeah. And then you build up like when we first started, I didn't have all this fucking equipment and shit Hell like that. No. Yo, like Amazon's been my best friend. Little by little, you put up a budget, you buy some things, you upgrade, you keep on upgrading. So you know, like I said, next year, my goal is to be outside the crib in the studio. That way it's more official, it's more space, you yeah. can do the more, more, have more fun with it. Right. But you have to be creative with the shit you got. Absolutely. And with music, it forces you to do that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, and then you, if you're still working and trying to do what you need to do with music, that puts your whole mindset like, damn, the struggle is still there. I'm still upset. My boss pissed me off. My girl's not happy. The kid is crying. Right. I got to get this out. Yeah. Let me put this in my song. Yeah. You know, that keeps on feeding you, that yeah, life yeah. story. You know what I'm saying? But people have to understand you can't give up. Yeah. And you have to be 100% of all that shit. Yeah, yeah. You got to. Yeah, that's yeah. commitment, devotion. Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely. How do you, how do you, how do you feel right now in the space you're in between your music and you having a day job and like, well, How luckily, you- luckily with me, um, I, I, I'm a graphic designer by trade, so I have my own little business, so I can kind of maneuver how I kind of want to. I don't right. necessarily have to clock in, so that's a beautiful thing. Um, not to say that that's any easier or... Right, still work. Right? Like, I, I still, you know, it's late-ass nights, early-ass mornings, and, and, you know, but it's it's... It allows me to maneuver a little bit better with the music situation. Sure. I can go out and in weekdays and stay at, you know, venues at, to certain times and right. not have to literally work at, you know, worry about getting up at a certain time in the morning. But sometimes I do, but, you know, I have I have a little more flexibility than, you know, the average, you know, nine to five worker, you know what I mean? No, so, I, I totally understand. Yeah, I, yeah. I chose to work nights right now. Gotcha. So then during the day I can do certain things, connect with people. Absolutely. I'm off on Sundays and Mondays and I just put my calendar up to yo, pick a day out of the month. Yeah. These two days are available. Let's make it happen. Yeah, yeah. And wifey's down with it too. She really knows it's the grind. Yeah. This is our, this is our shit. Like the, uh, this week, I'm uh, recording my, my documentary of me. Nice. Give me a short documentary. It's fucking dope. So man. that's part of our production company's coming out, me and wifey. Yeah. And it's like, yo, like, they're going to continue making this shit happen. Got to. You know, and, and, and I'm involved. And I tell everyone that too, like, as far as my guests, mm-hmm. I follow up with every guest that I have. Yeah. I support every single guest that I have. And I make sure that they understand, like, yo, my support runs through forever because I'm like, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna have you on just to have you on. Right, right. This is a family that I'm fucking building. Yeah. Because then one, one day I want to have a conference where all my guests come through and fucking connect. Yeah, yeah. And That's dope as fuck. What can we do now? Yeah. We're here. You yeah. can do this. You graphic design, great, but you're, of course, you're an artist at the same time. What can right. we do with that? Right. How can we present this to the community? What, what's our next move? Absolutely. As a people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, once we get to that that realm of thinking, outside of just, I want to get the new card, new chain, or whatever. Right. That's when we actually fucking win as a, as a, as a people. I agree. As a whole. Definitely. Agree. We're so fragmented right now. We're yeah. too busy fucking hating on each other or trolling on one another. Yeah. Like, we can't think about, yo, are you making a move? How can I be part of this movement? Yeah, yeah. 
everyone's moving. Everyone wants to be their own individual movement. Nah, it doesn't work that way. Like, you gotta have a leader in a movement. And then from there, you gotta have a, a bunch of people who are willing to understand and say, you know what? I love this. Let's be a part of it. It's just right. like different like religion. Exactly. People choose a different religion based off what they want to re- believe in at the time. Exactly. Exactly. The same thing with your movement. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. we get the community really right and strong. People are really gonna be nervous. They're nervous now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because they've seen the come up. Definitely. Are we get. Are we really fortify ourselves? No, oh, man. Man. Yeah. We got shit going for ourselves. Most definitely. I agree. But I think with your music, man, that's going to be a part of it. Yeah. I think with your style, your whole look, everything, you have it. I appreciate it, man. On the real. You know appreciate what I'm saying? It. I, I wouldn't say that if it wasn't true. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you need to just keep, continue just pressing on that shit, man. And whatever you need me for, bro, you just hit me up. Let me know. I appreciate that, man. However I can assist yeah. you, whatever we need to do, I, I'll pull them anywhere. You know what I'm saying? You need some extras, like, boom, we're there. You know sure. what I'm saying? Like, you... Your release of your, of your of your album, I want you to come back. For sure, absolutely. You know what I'm we'll saying? Do. You know, we can just dissect every fucking track. Sounds good to and me. And then fucking just hit it, hit it, hit it, and say, yo, this is, this is what it is. Because this, again, this is your platform to promote whatever you have, bro. Absolutely. Seriously, man. And uh, again, your girl, uh, Miss J. Brown, amazing. Uh, she's a keeper, bro. Isn't she? <laughs> she, she, she? She's a keeper, man. Absolutely. Um, she's a bomb. Like I said, she just came out I went on the podcast last week. Check it out. Episode 55. And, man, um, man it's been great talking to you, bro. I appreciate like, this it, This has man. been dope as fuck, man. Like, Absolutely. Like, this has been real fucking good, man. Appreciate like, you having me, man. No, this is it, man. Like, Giant Nomad presents Arizona Slim. Yes, sir. Oh.